All right, welcome everybody. My name is Evelina Chang, and today is the first episode of Passion Fruit Podcast. And I have the amazing Charlene here with me, aka Taipei Eater, Netflix star, entrepreneur, content creator. The list goes on and on. Welcome, Charlene. <laughs> so much for having me. I'm so honored to be on your first episode. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you so much for making it. I really appreciate it. No, this setup is so crazy. I feel like you guys have done it for ages. You know? I know, right? I wouldn't shout out. it, you know. Big shout out to my boy Sam and BB Chen, okay? They really put it together. So this is an amazing production. First time doing it. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Yes. Cool. So Charlene, tell us a little bit about you. You are a Jacqueline of all trades. You've done so much and in such a short amount of time. Talk to me about your journey. Tell me about who you are and what you do and what you stand for. Okay, so um, I started my Taipei Eater account back in 2016. And I get just like a little bit about like how I started was, you know, from early childhood, I was inspired by my brothers. They always love, enjoy taking pictures of food. Um, and then so I kind of just learned from the side. I have this like deep appreciation for food. And then I got into cooking and baking. That's how I kind of released my creativity. Wow. Yeah. And so my first job that I got was working at this media group called Boss Media. Yep. And yeah, like the the boss like really believed in me. And then he's like, hey, if you love cooking and you love taking pictures of food, why don't you start a food blog? That's amazing. Yeah. And then so I was like, well, it just seems like it's so tedious. I didn't want to do it. And he's like, well, what do you need? Like, how can I make your dream a reality? Yeah. And I was like, okay, first it's tedious and takes a lot of time and work. And he's like, well, you can start from Instagram, right? And then I was like, okay, well, my second like problem is I don't have enough money to spend because I was a poor college kid of course um and then I yeah and then he was like hey to help you to achieve your dreams I'll pay for an entire year of lunch uh if you're working on a work day you can yell wherever you go as long as it's not too expensive I'll pay for you and then he also paid for my coworker too oh my god yeah and then so we would I like I would look forward to every day's lunch because that's the time where we get to like, oh, y'all, like where we want to go. Right. Yeah. And there was like a story, right? Like one time we went to this um, Spam Musubi place because I was like, okay, well, you know, they sell this deep fried Spam Musubi. We have to try this. And once we got to the place, um, my boss was like, hey, get your owner out. And I was like, what is he trying to do? Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He was teeing you up. I know. And then so at that time, I just started my account two weeks prior so I only had 300 followers and they're oh all my, my friends <laughs> yeah I was like that is crazy and then he's like well get your owner out the owner came out and he's like hey this is Charlene you need to treat her really well because she's gonna help you promote your business and I was like oh my god like this is so embarrassing what yeah and you know how like people have like imposter syndrome 100% For me it's like well it's not even imposter I haven't even started right. or made it yet I had 300 <laughs> friends and family yeah. watching me this guy He's talking me up. Right. I have such high expectations yeah. to fulfill. Yeah. So to me, I was like, okay, if he believed in me more than I believe in myself, then that says a lot. And I need to, you know, continue to do it. Hundred yeah. percent. How I started. I relate to that so much. And you know, it's so funny, but it's so cliche. People are always saying, you know, you are who you surround yourself with, mm -hmm. but it is so true. And when you have somebody who blindly sees your mm -hmm. talent or I so strongly sees your talent and right. believes in you mm -hmm. even more than you believe in yourself in that certain circumstance, right. it really tells a lot, you know, and you got to mm -hmm. take that and run with it. And so I love that he did that. It's yeah. so hard to find mentors like that. And he even, well, we were just hopping on a call you know, like two, three days ago because he saw the show on Netflix and he's no like, way. what the heck? Like, I didn't even know you're on Netflix. No yeah. And then, so he was just like, 
talk to me and he's like hey for some reason i just feel like whatever you place your hand on like you can somehow just make it gold yeah everything you touch turns to gold right and i was just like whoa i didn't even see it for myself like to me it's like i see my own journey i'm like i'm struggling i'm struggling yep. and to him it's like well i see that potential in you and i feel like um every everyone needs that someone to yes. root for you and then be your like biggest cheerleader 100 right? and remind you of how far that you've come because mm -hmm. i know for me and this was ingrained in me ever since i was a child it's like go 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 you're never enough you know yeah. oh a minus no go for an a a plus you know Typical Asian exactly and it's like we never stop to give ourselves credit right. and i recently read this book called slight edge and it reminded me that you have to celebrate your micro wins mm. right no matter how small even if it's like oh i got up this morning and i did something that made me feel really good about how I started mm. my day. It's so reminding yourself of those yeah. little wins to help push forward in the big overarching goal. Wow. I feel like you're speaking to me right now. <laughs> Because, like, I think for the longest time, I was um, constantly comparing myself with, you know, other influencers. 100%. And I was, like, looking at, okay, what are they doing that I'm not doing? Or, oh, how come they get, you know, certain deals and I don't? Right. Like, oh, why am I lacking? But I think in the midst of that, I just forget to celebrate myself. Like, exactly. all the small wins. And even, I mean, like, with the Netflix show, like, sometimes I'm like, well, I'm so undeserving because everyone else on that show, they're somebody, right? Yeah. And they're already a celebrity celebrity they've been, been in the media space for so long right and for me it's like well what did I do to you know like deserve be, it to deserve to be on the yeah. same platform as them but but you have to know that you were chosen for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, just like how your yeah. old mentor saw something special in you. That is now, it's a common thing that's been <laughs> happening to you, girl. Like you yeah. gotta own it. I know. You know, it's not happen happening by accident. These things don't happen by accident. It's because you're putting something out into the universe that's attracting it. Mm, and so it makes me so, so happy to just yeah. hear like, Wow, there is another female entrepreneur that's mm -hmm. as humble, that has the same mindset, that has been through the same struggles. Because I know for me, like I constantly am in a setting where as an influencer, we're comparing ourselves, comparing analytics, follow for follow, like mm -hmm. for like, brand mm -hmm. by brand, right? right? But at the end of the day, who are you really racing, mm -hmm. right? Who are you competing with, right. right? The only competition that you have in life is with yourself. And mm. I think that that's something that I really want to pass on to the next generation it's like I don't want my kids to have the same narrative that my parents gave me it's like oh yeah our neighbor this person our neighbor got into Stanford what about you you know like exactly. oh she went to Harvard what about you and it's like who cares, right? I, I wanted a different path. I chose a different path. I went against the grain. And so I would love to hear, how do your parents feel about you taking a untraditional path, mm -hmm. kind of starting off as a, you said it was a business econ major, mm -hmm. and then now full-time influencer, star on Netflix. I want to know how, how they feel about it. Well, um, I also have like a full-time job on the side. Oh. Um, yeah, I work at a CBD oil company right now. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really in right now. Right. I help them with um, business development as well as their marketing aspect. And I work with a lot of influencer be just because I am an influencer myself. Yep. Um, and regarding to the creator aspect, I think when I first started, my parents definitely didn't believe in me. Yep. And they're like, well, like, what are you doing? You're just like going out, having fun, eating like good food. Exactly. Exactly. And you should be like working on like your business or your future. And yep. at one point, like prior to college, they yeah, my brother went to Stanford actually. <laughs> so my so my dad was like, "What are you doing? Like you should be going to all these like Ivy League school. Right. Why didn't you apply to Harvard? Right? Why aren't you a doctor or a lawyer? Right? And at one point, I'm like, no, this is not who I am. Right. And I feel like um, there's no one route to be successful. You, Agreed. as long as you find your passion and then you really dive deep, and yep. I think you know you will eventually achieve something that you're proud of. I love that. Yeah, and I also feel like if you constantly like prep yourself um i mean i feel like 60 percent yeah it's luck but 40 percent is always like okay it's also about like how prepared you are how ready you are yes so when luck happens like how are you gonna you know like handle that seize the opportunity yeah. yes right. preparation creates mm -hmm. opportunity and i yeah. don't think that people really ingrain that in mm -hmm. themselves and so
So I love that you just said that. That's such a wonderful token of advice. Mm -hmm. Um, So with that, tell me about this cinnamon roll business that you (laughs) ran in Taiwan. So uh, it started back in, I think it was like 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's like prior to pandemic, obviously. But um, there was this another business in Taiwan and Taipei. They're so popular. And when I when I heard about it, I was like, what? People will wait for like eight months to a year just for a box of cinnamon rolls. Right. And um, so then like that shop also sells like, you know, like you can get like one or two. if you go in like daily, they sell like a maximum of 30. And then so everyone can like order one for their table. Got it. So I went in and tried their cinnamon rolls and I was like, oh, I can definitely make it better. You oh know, like it's gosh. like just a little thought. I was like, I like, cause me being actually like, you know, I lived in the States, I went yeah. back and um, I was just like, well, I can make it better. And I, I went home it. and I, you know, I tested it. I looked up a recipe, I tweaked it a little bit and I, I made a batch, right? Yeah. And me being the influencer, I was like, hey, I know all these restaurant owners. I want them to try. Right. So then I brought it to, you know, like some chefs and this one cafe and and, you know, in Taipei, and it's should I say the name? Yeah, yeah, okay, you yeah, totally yeah. Say it. Like the name was um, it's Antipodine. Uh huh. And I brought it in, and I shared it with the owner, and then he was like, "Hey, Shar, like this is the best cinnamon roll I've ever oh had my in Taipei, gosh. at least in Taipei. You know, right. like this is the best I've ever had." And he's like, "Can I actually buy it from you?" And like to me, I was like, "Oh, what?" Like. You know, like I d- couldn't believe it. Right. But I was like, you know what? Like, let's let's do it. So it started from twenty to forty to eighty a week, and um, at that point, I was like, hey, I can probably make more. Like, yeah. Um, volume. If I were to like sell it myself, right? Yep. So then I started doing the packaging, branding, stickers. I designed it, wow. everything, and then I was the one that like, you know, I was making it. I was yep. cleaning up. So I will wake up every day at six a.m. and I'll go to bed at two a.m. And I was in charge of customer service and also social media. And I had my own end. blog. Yeah. It was my full time job. So I was barely <laughs> sleeping. Um, oh my gosh. But it was so fulfilling because people would give you know, give me all these feedback. They're yes. like, oh, I love this cinnamon roll. Or uh, people would bring gifts when they meet me. Aww. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, I thought the person behind this account or like the person that's making this cinnamon roll would be like an old lady. You know, oh like, you know, can you imagine like someone's like <laughs> kneading the dough right. and like, eh, like, imagine like a dumpling lady, you right. know? Right, exactly. And, and then they're like, oh, I can't believe it's like a young lady and right. like she's a creator. And at that moment, I think like no one really knew what I looked like because I never posted my face mm-hmm. on my social media mm-hmm. and so yeah I would get like people bring, bringing like their gifts wow. and people would write me cards and then there was like a girl I think like her house like they own a farm so then they have like a bunch of like geese oh and my then, gosh so they make she... like geese oil oh my geese gosh yeah. yeah and then so like she was like hey like there is like a gift box like that's from me and then like that's what our family does and then he, she just give it to me and I was like wow like that is crazy that's so sweet and I just really enjoy you know the connection the human connection face to face and I was like wow like I'm actually meeting my followers yep face to face so that yep. was like one of my fondest memory but unfortunately I was just like so tired by like the eight month mark and my dad was like not having it I think like even in the beginning he didn't really believe in me right so he's like hey you don't have a culinary degree. Yeah. Why would people believe you or right. why would people buy? I was like, I don't know. I'm just going to give it a try. And then people were buying. And then he's like, do people even like it? Right. right. And I was like, well, it seems like people like it. They dig it. And then after a while, they're like, okay, well, um, our house smells like a bakery now. Oh my gosh. And then eventually, <laughs> my dad was like, I'm going to start charging you electricity and oh then like the gosh. water bill. Like, you need to go and like pay me. And I was like, okay, well. <laughs> Yeah. So, and and then after that, at what point in time did it click for your parents where they're like, okay, not only is she a Wang Hong, right? Like she is, she has done it for herself. She's created a platform for herself, but she's monetizing off of it, right? So at what point in time did they buy into what you were doing? I think, uh, I think in the beginning, he would just like, oh, why would people um, feed you? Like, you know, and then he was like, oh, you're having too much fun. You're just eating. You're having fun. Like, you're not, you know, doing anything serious. Um, 
but I think it really hit him when um pandemic hit oh. right yeah so that's when all the restaurants were shut down people are so scared to go out yeah. um but at the same time i would get like eight to ten restaurants like sending me their food yeah like to our house like yep. every day and then he's like oh wow like so maybe you are big like right. maybe people do like like your content and then maybe they do want to work with you right yes. and then so that was like the moment where it clicked Wanted to take a second to thank our amazing partners at Onyx Golf. Onyx Golf is where precision meets passion, and you get to step into a world of state-of-the-art indoor golf simulation. It's powered by cutting-edge TrackMan technology and backed by Titleist fitting expertise. With their cafe and lounge that serves specialty coffee and craft beers, you can elevate your experience and your game. At Onyx Golf, every swing counts towards your success on the course. Play strong, believe, and achieve with Onyx Golf. I, I can definitely relate to that yeah. too. My parents had the same reaction when I wanted to leave my nine to five job back in 2021. Cause I left twice. Actually, oh. I, I left corporate America twice. So in 2021, I left yeah. DoorDash. Oh, wow. Uh, yep. So I was working for DoorDash corporate at the time. Okay. And so I left DoorDash and then from there started my own digital marketing agency. On that same token, I started building my own personal brand again because I had Instagram since it, I was a very early adopter on the platform, like back in 2011, maybe oh, 2010. Wow. Early. Yep. Yeah. So I don't lead with this, but I competed in pageants when I was young. So ever since I was 13. No wonder. I was like, you're so beautiful. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy is that like, maybe it's not with uh, like yeah. the imposter syndrome, but I okay, don't know. No, no, I understand <laughs> why. I was like, okay. So, so yeah. ever since I was 13, I started competing in pageants and it wasn't because my parents put me in them. Okay. So it was actually because I was at my best friend's house and her brother's girlfriend was Miss Sacramento Asia. Okay. And so I walked in, I was wearing hoodies and jeans, but she saw my height. And at that time I was a tomboy. Like I was very sporty. I, all I did, my life was academics and sports. And she looked at me and she was like, Hey, do you want to compete in Miss Teen Taiwan? And I was like, what? what? Like, I don't even know how to walk in heels. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I get nervous on stage. And she was like, no, don't worry. Like, I will coach you. We will take this summer and I will groom you. Like, there is <laughs> wow. scholarship money on the other side. This is going to look so good on your college applications. Like, this is it's going to be so good for you. And I was like, all right, fuck it, whatever, <laughs> you know? And then I went home and I told my parents, sat them down at the dinner table and I was like, mom, dad, I'm competing in Miss Teen Taiwan. They were like, out of here, <laughs> threw the application at my face. They were like, absolutely not. Because they Why? always taught me, they always taught me that beauty fades, dumb is forever. Okay. And so they- Well, at least you have beauty, other people <laughs> don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, yeah. but I see, they didn't see it that way. They Leverage wanted- Leverage it, girl. Yeah. Right? In this mm -hmm. day and age, we can talk about it now, but like, Asian American parents, immigrant parents are like, no, you need to get straight- Work like, hard. Correct. Yeah. Like, who cares about a beauty pageant, right? And so I ended up going to Costco, buying two big packs of Snickers bars, and I sold them door to door to raise five hundred dollars oh for my God. application fee. And so, gosh, That's I can't even crazy. remember. I know it's you're crazy. an entrepreneur at, at such an early at age. such an early age. I was yeah. like, I need to make this happen for myself. And so even at that time, like there was just a lot of just disbelief mm. when I won, right? When I won that pageant, that pageant, my parents looked at me and they're like, okay, that was cool. <laughs> that was cool. But now you got this crown and sash, like now what, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that, that career ended after four years after I won Miss California Asia. Wow. Um, okay. I, I actually developed an eating disorder the year before I competed in Miss California Asia because the industry- Were you too stressed out or- Stress. Also because at that time, Asian American beauty standards looked really different right? Mm -hmm. Thick wasn't in at that time. It was heroin chic and I was in the high fashion space, right? And so being an athlete, being a model, like it's you're working out all the time and you're not eating enough. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And the girls are mean, right? Girls are really mean in high school. And of course, who are they going to go after, right? The girl that's the Miss Pageant. <laughs> right, exactly. And so all of those pressures combined, I ended up struggling with an eating disorder. But the pageant director um, for Miss California ended up telling me, she was like, listen, 
if this is something that you're going through, talk about it, like get up on stage and share that story. So my platform was to talk about body image positivity and um, raising awareness for eating disorders within the community. And so I found that Mm -hmm. to be a really rewarding experience for me, won the title. And then after that, went to school in New York. I never, I didn't even do one event as Miss California Asia. I didn't do anything with the title. I just simply took the win scholarship from there, went to college. And that was my case close with that time of my life because I knew if I continued on during that time, it wouldn't lead to healthy behaviors on my end. Mm. So I grew the social media platform to a certain degree up till 2013. Mm-hmm. After that, stepped away with it, was pretty much just a corporate girl through and through. And so when I wanted to revive the page, when I left corporate America, mm-hmm. my parents were like, why? Like, for what? Like, Okay, like you, you have nothing to do. Like, do you need to go find a boyfriend? Like, what do you need to do? Like, like you know, like just yeah, typical. making fun of me. My and parents then, are still like that, so yeah, I get you. And I was like, yeah. you know what, mom? I'm gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna see where it goes. And so during that time, and, and this was after I got healthy, so I started showcasing. Um, pretty much fitness workouts, no matter what size I was at the time, right? I was probably the heaviest that I ever was Mm -hmm. because I was just recovering. I wanted to show women that they could be beautiful and have fun and be sexy no matter what size that you were, whether you're 180 pounds or you're 120 pounds, right? It's not about how much you weigh. It's about how you carry yourself and how you wear Mm -hmm. it, you know? And so that was my original platform. So in 2021, that's how I grew the following. And then I pivoted to golf this past year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. I feel like I was supposed to tie this in with something, but I completely (laughs) forgot. I just went on a tangent. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's it's great. Yeah. Um, But with all that, um, okay. So tell me about how they felt when they heard that you were going on Netflix. Well, okay, so my parents don't have a Netflix account. What? And I don't think they they know what I'm on or they don't even know that I'm on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I okay, so the funny thing is I told my dad I was like, "Hey dad, I'm on TV." My dad was like, "Oh, so were you teaching people how to cook on TV?" What? And I was like, "No, like why would I?" And then he's like, "So then what what were you doing on right, TV then?" Right. And I was like, "I was showing people how to eat, like where to eat." In and, Taipei. Then, and yeah, and then he's like, "Oh, so you're just eating on camera." And I was like, "Yeah." Yeah. And I don't know. He just like made it sound so lame. I was like, yeah, I was just like eating on TV. And he's like, why would people want to watch you eat on TV? Yeah. Old but, school. But it's all good. You know, at the end of the day, I think just like what you said, like you celebrate your own wins. Yes. Um, like rather than waiting on people to like give you the praise, like you need to first accept yeah. yourself. Right. And 100%. Then, so I think there is like an aspect of like, okay, your body image. And there's also like, you know, confidence, like it comes from like every aspect, right? Yes. It's about accepting yourself and also celebrating yourself. And um, regardless of if people know it or not. 100%. And so that leads me to my next question. How do you deal with haters and trolls? Um, so far, luckily I haven't had that many, um, just because I feel like for the longest time I wasn't showing my face. Um, and also, uh, I guess like for type A eater, like what I intended to do is just to share food, right? Share about everything Taiwan, like Taiwanese, uh, heritage, culture, and allow people to really fall in love with Taiwan. And it doesn't really matter where you are. You can be in LA and then, and like, because you saw my account that inspire you to try, travel. yeah, to travel to Taiwan yeah. or like try a Taiwanese restaurant here. Right. Um, and it's about like the connection, right? It's about like enjoying having fun, uh, with food. Right. Yep. And I don't even know where I, where I'm going with this. Um, but wait, what was the question again? Uh, how do you deal with haters and trolls? Oh, yeah, trolls? yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there were a couple instances like where I really had like really horrible dining experience, right? Yeah. And I can't, I just couldn't help it. I was like, you guys suck. Like you guys like, <laughs> treat your customers like so shitty. Right. Um, and I just really like feel the urge to like write something. Um, and I think like it has happened before where uh, I think there was like a Oami Swa place yeah. in Taipei. Yeah. And then their service is so bad. Like they, like literally, um, 
their fingers was like in the oami so when they're like you no know handing way. it to me i was like that is disgusting no. yeah and then i was just like so mad and then even after i pay i think it was like 40 ntd at the time and i gave him like a 50 ntd yep. and then he gave me like 10 back and then he was like pressing it onto like the little mian shen on no way. on the table i was like i am like not on purpose but like they're just like so done with life yeah. um so then i like posted on my instagram like story and i was yeah. like don't go there and then i guess like the relatives or like their friends saw it and then in chinese basically they say like oh if you don't like it don't go yeah okay yeah and it's like oh like why do you need to like you know like talk back about um the the restaurant or like the shop and then i was like well i was like so mad i was like if you like it then don't watch it Facts. don't look at it exactly yeah. yeah and i think a lot of the influencers nowadays like there are many ways to showcase your account right yeah. and then some people they don't really mind about hate and then i think that can really be a good way to promote your account like just through those haters right i agree they're actually your biggest fan and yeah. then your biggest cheerleader so with them like really commenting like what they feel how they feel it's like engagement it really is yeah. yes so, I think a lot of like to a lot of influencers like they get really beat up when they get hate comments like hateful comments on their you know comment section yeah. um but i feel like you know like because they care that's why they're commenting on it yes. if they don't care like why bother right like everyone's so busy um yeah and then i think like there are also your motivation to do more or like do right. better exactly yeah. i totally agree with mm -hmm. you and i love that and i think that that's a great way to look at it mm -hmm. and what would you say would be the number one piece of advice to the next generation of creators and mm -hmm. entrepreneurs? I think one of them is uh, networking. So um, how I landed my, you know, like the Netflix show was because of like people's recommendations. Yeah. So basically there's only probably a handful of like the OG food bloggers in Taiwan. I mean, obviously now like there's so many big celebrities and yes. also, um, you know, big influencers online, they get like way more engagement than me. But because like, I mean, it's always about, you know, it's not about like, what you know is about who you know. I mean, mm -hmm. what you know really matters, but the, I think the networking aspect is equally as important. And um, yeah, and I just think I got lucky for sure. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Now, do you feel as though being in an influencer role and being a creator has opened more doors for you? Uh, for sure. I think, um, you know, I, so I was born and raised in Taiwan, actually, and then I moved to the States when I was 15. Um, and then I went throughout college, I worked for a year, went back to Taiwan, and I remember at the time I was just like, I don't want to go back to Taiwan, I don't know anyone. Like, the only people that I know is like people from elementary school right. or middle school. I don't right. even talk to them really. It was really. foreign at that point. Yeah, yes. and I love my friends in LA, I yes. love my friends here, it's like, why would I go back? But I want to spend time with my family, but I also want to enjoy my time there. Right having the platform allowed me to network yeah. and then meet a lot of content creators and yeah. um and i think like by surrounding yourself with those content creators it really inspire you to you know be more creative and it pushes you to you know keep on releasing those content so i agree i think without um i guess like the network and also you know like the people that i, sur I surround myself with i wouldn't be able to continue you know to like shoot photos and because like oh we always and also like in time i feel like overall it's a really um positive environment it really is yeah yes. like where i could collaborate with people people want to help me i want to help my friends to you know like get more engagement on their account as well and then we help each other it's never like a one man's team and it even though we, yeah yeah even though we all have like our own accounts it's like hey i love your photo and right. then yeah so like by spreading those words of encouragement it really pushes you to do better i agree yeah. i totally agree and i see instagram as or all the social media platforms as inspiration right we are so lucky to live in this day and age where we can download information at such a fast rate and the population as a whole has gotten so much more creative, so much more visual. We live in a digital age and it's like, if you're not on social media platforms, like what are you doing? <laughs> 
you know you should really leverage yeah like i mean like right now we are learning that hey ai is becoming such a big thing yeah but it really it's a double-edged sword like it how is. are you like integrating with those new technology right. or are you just like hey like those exist but then you're not going to utilize it right yeah and then those can be like your biggest like support with your business I totally and like what agree. you're doing right now at the podcast. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Use AI to your advantage. You know what I mean? Like these tools and these resources have been years and years into development to help us, right? Yeah. Granted, there is that element of regulation, but <laughs> we'll let the other people who have, right. you know, worry right. about that. Right. <laughs> um, awesome. Perfect. Um, I did. Ah, yes. Cultural challenges. Mm, so mm-hmm. growing up, um, being that you were born in Taiwan, coming to Los Angeles, pretty much creating a name for yourself. What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome as an Asian American female creator? So, okay, so I'm actually not Asian, um, not Asian American, because I'm just Taiwanese. That's, yeah. Oh, so, she's ooh. just Taiwanese. <laughs> I'm just Taiwanese. I um, love that. Yeah. So um, I, because you know, I was like born and raised in Taiwan. That's right. Um, but when I first moved to the states, I have to admit it was really challenging for me. But I recognize that in order to connect with people on a deeper level, you need to master the communication part. Right? Yes. You need to master the language and you have to be able to understand what other people are saying. So right. I really, um, I feel like I spent a lot of time um, mastering my language. And yeah. then, yeah, so now I think I can type right I, I think I'm pretty proud of myself the fact that I can type right read everything in both Chinese and English that's amazing I wish um, I could do that and then <laughs> yeah so I mean like it was a struggle yeah um there's a lot of like loss in translation moments sure yes. I mean I'm pretty sure there still is um but I think like it reached a point where I was like hey I think I can you know like immerse myself and I wouldn't feel um, so different. I think like there were a lot of instances like when I first moved to America, I feel othered because I was quote unquote like very fobby. Uh, Even in college, right? Like uh, there was obviously a difference between me and a lot of Asian Americans. Mm -hmm. And once I moved back to Taiwan, it's like, oh, people see me, they're like, oh, you're not Taiwanese, like you're American. You're like in the middle. Yeah, and I was like, okay, where do I belong? And then, I mean, in a way, I mean, because my Chinese is so good, I found my, you know, my clique, like people, they're just similar to me, like people that study abroad or like Asian Americans are, you know, trying to get a job in Taiwan. Right. Um, And we just found that, like I don't know it's like a comfort zone I guess sure um where we really understood each other and then we were able to understand each other's struggles right yes um but I think I felt the most last year when I was uh, two years ago when I was in grad school I was at Northwestern um in our program half of the students were domestic students so they were born raised like local you know like a lot of them are from Illinois right and then the other half they're straight up like they're from China (laughs) yeah right and then there's like me and there's like politics that kind of came into like as as much as I don't want to see it but it did like subtly um and then I was like wow I don't belong like I'm not white I'm not black I'm not Asian American and then I'm also not like you know like just came from you know China or Taiwan yeah and so how did you navigate all that um it was very uncomfortable but I think you know again like I celebrated the difference and I accepted myself and I kind of just, you know, like instead of putting so much attention on the differences, I think we need to like look for areas where we can show people like a different aspect of life and then, um, and how you can thrive. Right. I agree. Yes. So instead of focusing on the differences, Mm -hmm. focuses on the common thread. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's Mm -hmm. amazing. And so with that, what are the plans for your future? I, I for the future. What are the plans for your future? I heard that you have a podcast coming up in the pipeline. <laughs> Tell me about that. So uh, I think um, as an influencer, creator, um, and an extrovert, I know a lot of people. Yeah. Right. And I just know that hey, a lot of my friends they're all so different. Um, yet you know I could connect with all of them. 
you know, on a deeper level. Yes. And also like they're super talented and very successful in their like each of their fields, right? right? And so that was like an idea that came up around November or December of last year, and hopefully I can make it happen. You I know, love with, it with Sam's help. <laughs> yes, go Sam and BB Chen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, tell me about the Netflix show. I know that that's something that I've been dying to hear about. How did it all happen? Give me give me the brief on that. So um, last year I was working in the media space um, and I was working as a PR communication executive in, yeah, in the pretty like well-known like media and, um, but the culture was like so toxic. Mm -hmm. I just absolutely hated it. Like I hated, um, the culture and I hated like the competitiveness, like, cause you know, at the end of the day, like we should not see our coworkers as competition. competition. Yeah. Agree. Like we're trying to achieve a common goal. Correct. Yeah. And then if you're spending so much time in like, Oh, am I doing better? Am I doing worse? And then do I feel inferior? We're never going to get anywhere. I agree. Yes. And so I was just miserable. So eventually um, I think I just like, and plus like some like family issue, I like gather the courage. I was like, I need some time to sink in and just like really, um, do some self care. Right. Yep. Um, so I quit my job, um, and you know, this opportunity just landed and I was like, okay, well I feel like it's like a hint from God that, yeah. Hey, like that was the right decision that I made. And, um, yeah, and then so like when they emailed me, I saw it in my email, and then someone was like, "Hey, we have this Netflix opportunity, mm -hmm. and uh, would you be available to like hop on a call with us?" And I thought that was a scam. Yeah, at yeah, because there's like, so many, right. right? And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hop on that call and see, you know, like show those scammers like what's up. And then, <laughs> that and is then, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, this is like super legit. This you know, it's a real a, deal. Oh shit, that's a yeah. real producer. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. And then I was just like so excited. I didn't even know who recommended me, right? And until, you know, like they, uh, it went through like some rounds, like a few rounds of like interview. Like they, it's not like really interviews per se. I guess like they were just like hopping on a call, and asked me for my portfolio. It was like, oh, do you have any experience like talking on camera? And I think being in the media space, I was uh, I had some experience interviewing, you know, celebrities yeah. and also influencers, and so that kind of helped me showcase my ability. And from there. Um, they're like, hey, um, you know, would you be down to fly to Taiwan in May? Oh my god! And I was like, you know what? F it. I'm gonna. Right. I'm gonna fly. Yeah. So I flew back to Taiwan. I missed my family anyway. I was oh already gonna go gosh. back. Yeah. So I went back. I got to spend time with my friends and my family. I got to film this like wonderful Netflix show. Wow. Um, yeah. And got to meet Phil. And then he's a super awesome, like super nice guy. That is incredible. I have been following. Following Phil since I was in college. Somebody Feed Phil was one of my favorite shows to binge because he's so charismatic and goofy and he's just such a great TV personality. And it's so cool that you got to stand side by side with him on set and took him around Taiwan. Like that's absolutely insane. I know all my friends like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe you're on Netflix. And I think yesterday I was just talking to my friend. I was like, I got so much support from my friends. Like, yes. um, for the longest time when I was working on my account, I just feel like it's a like it's my project yeah. and it's my responsibility and right. then no one really care. Like I mean, it's just like my thing. And then people here and there they like make fun of me. They're like, Oh, you're the Taipei eater girl, right? <laughs> it's like she's like she's a foodie, she's a food blogger. So that like slowly became like my identity, right? right? Um, but after the Netflix show came out, like so many friends that like even people that I haven't spoken with for years. Yep. Right. Popped um, out. Yeah. Yeah. They came out of nowhere like even <laughs> this like one host family i live with in kentucky right um the mom like reached out to me he's like sure like that's awesome like i saw you on netflix that is so yeah. cool and then like the funny thing was um she was like oh 
I still remember your accent when you first came oh to the States. Gosh. It's like, you sound so different. You look so different. I wouldn't have, like, guessed that was you. Wow. Yeah, and then, like, it's only till she heard my name. She's like, oh, wow, like, that is Charlene. Yeah, it's, like, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, and with people, like, sharing the content, I was like, wow, like, everyone's like, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, wow, like, people are watching from afar, and they're, they care they're about what I do, you. and they're celebrating me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I really really appreciate those people in my life and I yeah and that was like the moment I was like well I have a lot of great friends that you know truly care about what I do it sounds like you are truly loved and you should be so so proud of yourself because to pretty much create a name for yourself create a brand for yourself an entire identity surrounding food <laughs> like that is amazing like I feel like that within itself should inspire the next generation of young adults that are emerging and thinking of what to do in their careers it's like anything is possible you know as long as you believe in yourself you have good people surrounding you and you take that leap of faith I feel like it it's the sky is the limit Right. And I feel like um, I think like one suggestion I would give is, you know, like really prioritize your self-care. Yes. Um, I know social media can be a little unhealthy at times. Yep. So um, even though I started in 2016, there were times where I just feel so drained and I don't feel the joy from yeah. creating those content. And then I would just take breaks, yep. you know, and it's like no one is like you're not obligated to right. release content every day, even right. though I mean, it's going to help you but then um when you don't feel like you have the ability or you have the time and space and then the energy to do it like remember to yeah like save some time for yourself give yourself some grace mm -hmm. yeah i totally agree and don't beat yourself up just because like the analytics doesn't look good you know right. at the end of the day it's like do you enjoy what you do do you right. like the uh the content that you, you produced are, exactly yeah. it's yeah. a way of sharing your own individuality and i yeah. think it's important and then who cares if people like it, if you like it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining, <laughs> Charlene. It was such a pleasure having <laughs> you on the podcast. You are thank such you. an inspiration to all of us. So I really appreciate the time. No, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so fun. Of course. So honored. <laughs> no, girl, yeah. I am the honored one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>